Chapter One of Jerusalem to Revelations, a quartet of spiritual experience. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tony Addison. Jerusalem to Revelations, a Quartet of Spiritual Experience, by William Blake and others. Jerusalem, Part One. Of the sleep of Ulro, and of the passage through eternal death, and of the awaking to eternal life, this theme calls me in sleep night after night and every morn awakes me at sunrise then i see the saviour over me spreading his beams of love and dictating the words of this mild song awake awake o sleeper of the land of shadows wake expand i am in you and you in me mutual in love divine fibres of love from man to man through albion's pleasant land in all the dark atlantic vale down from the hills of surrey a black water accumulates return albion return thy brethren call thee and thy fathers and thy sons thy nurses and thy mothers thy sisters and thy daughters weep at thy soul's disease and the divine vision is darkened thy emanation that was wont to play before thy face beaming forth with her daughters into the divine bosom where hast thou hidden thy emanation lovely jerusalem from the vision and fruition of the holy one i am not a god afar off i am a brother and a friend within your bosoms i reside and you reside in me lo we are one forgiving all evil not seeking recompense ye are my members o ye sleepers of beulah land of shade but the perturbed man away turns down the valleys dark phantom of the overheated brain shadow of immortality seeking to keep my soul a victim to thy love which binds man the enemy of man into deceitful friendships jerusalem is not her daughters are indefinite by demonstration man alone can live and not by faith my mountains are my own and i will keep them to myself the malvern and the chiviot the walls plinlimon and snowdon are mine here will i build my laws of moral virtue humanity shall be no more but war and princedom and victory so spake albion in jealous fears hiding his emanation upon the thames and medway rivers of beulah dissembling his jealousy before the throne divine darkening cold the banks of the thames are clouded the ancient porches of albion are darkened they are drawn through unbounded space scattered upon the void in incoherent despair Cambridge and Oxford and London are driven among the starry wheels, rent away and dissipated in chasms and abysses of sorrow, enlarged without dimension, terrible. Albion's mountains run with blood. The cries of war and of tumult resound into the unbounded night every human perfection of mountain and river and city are small and withered and darkened cam is a little stream ely 
is almost swallowed up. Lincoln and Norwich stand trembling on the brink of Udan Adan. Wales and Scotland shrink themselves to the west and to the north, mourning for fear of the warriors in the vale of Entuthon Benithon. Jerusalem is scattered abroad like a cloud of smoke through non-entity. Moab and Ammon and Amalek and Canaan and Egypt and Aram receive her little ones for sacrifices and the delights of cruelty. Trembling I sit day and night. My friends are astonished at me, yet they forgive my wanderings. I rest not from my great task to open the eternal worlds, to open the immortal eyes of man inwards into the worlds of thought, into eternity. Ever expanding in the bosom of God, the human imagination. O Saviour, pour upon me thy spirit of meekness and love. Annihilate the selfhood in me, be thou all my life. Guide thou my hand, which trembles exceedingly upon the rock of ages, while I write of the building of Golganuza, and of the terrors of Entuthan, of Hamd and Hyle and Coban, of Quantock, Peachy, Brereton, Slade, and Hutton, of the terrible sons and daughters of Albion and their generations, Schofield, Cox, Kotop, and Bowen revolve most mightily upon the furnace of loss. Before the eastern gate, bending their fury, they warp to destroy the furnaces, to desolate Golganuza, and to devour the sleeping humanity of Albion in rage and hunger. They revolve into the furnaces southward, and are driven forth northward, divided into male and female forms, time after time. From these twelve, all the families of England spread abroad. The male is a furnace of beryl, the female is a golden loom. I behold them, and their rushing fires overwhelm my soul in London's darkness, and my tears fall day and night upon the emanations of Albion's sons, the daughters of Albion, names anciently remembered, but now condemned as fictions, although in every bosom they control our vegetative powers. These are united into Terza and her sisters on Mount Gilead, Campbell and Gwendolen and Conwenna and Cordelia and Ignoje, and these united into Rahab in the covering cherub on Euphrates, Guinevere and Guinefred and Goneril and Sabrina Beautiful, Estrild, Mahitabal and Ragan, lovely daughters of Albion. They are the beautiful emanations of the twelve sons of Albion. The starry wheels revolved heavily over the furnaces, drawing Jerusalem in anguish of maternal love eastward, a pillar of a cloud with Vala upon the mountains, howling in pain, redounding from the arms of Beulah's daughters, out from the furnaces of loss, above the head of loss. A pillar of smoke, writhing afar into non-entity, redounding till the cloud reaches afar, outstretched among the starry wheels, which revolve heavily 
in the mighty void above the furnaces oh what avail the loves and tears of beulah's lovely daughters they hold the immortal form in gentle bands and tender tears but all within is opened into the deeps of entuthon beneathon a dark and unknown night indefinite unmeasurable without end abstract philosophy warring in enmity against imagination which is the divine body of the lord jesus blessed for ever and there jerusalem wanders with valour upon the mountains attracted by the revolutions of those wheels the cloud of smoke immense and jerusalem and valour weeping in the cloud wander away into the chaotic void lamenting with her shadow among the daughters of albion among the starry wheels lamenting for her children for the sons and daughters of albion lost heard her lamentations in the deep so far his tears fall incessant before the furnaces and his emanation divided in pain eastward toward the starry wheels but westward a black horror his spectre driven by the starry wheels of albion's sons black and opaque divided from his back he labours and he mourns for as his emanation divided his spectre also divided in terror of those starry wheels and the spectre stood over lost howling in pain a blackening shadow blackening dark and opaque cursing the terrible loss bitterly cursing him for his friendship to albion suggesting murderous thoughts against albion loss raged and stamped the earth in his might and terrible wrath he stood and stamped the earth then he threw down his hammer in rage and in fury then he sat down and wept terrified then arose and chanted his song labouring with the tongues and hammer but still the spectre divided and still his pain increased in pain the spectre divided in pain of hunger and thirst to devour loss's human perfection but when he saw that loss was living panting like a frighted wolf and howling he stood over the immortal in the solitude and darkness upon the darkening thames across the whole island westward a horrible shadow of death among the furnaces beneath the pillar of folding smoke and he sought by other means to lure lot by tears by arguments of science and by terrors terrors in every nerve by spasms and extended pain while loss answered unterrified to the opaque blackening fiend and thus the spectre spake wilt thou still go on to destruction till thy life is all taken away by this deceitful friendship he drinks thee up like water like wine he pours thee into his tons 
thy daughters are trodden in his vintage he makes thy sons the trampling of his bulls they are ploughed and harrowed for his profit lo thy stolen emanation is his garden of pleasure all the spectres of his sons mock thee look how they scorn thy once admired palaces now in ruins because of albion because of deceit and friendship for lo hand has peopled babel and nineveh hyle ashur and aram cohen's son is nimrod his son cush is adjoined to aram by the daughter of babel in a woven mantle of pestilence and war they put forth their spectrous cloudy sails which drive their immense constellations over the deadly deeps of indefinite udan adam cox is the father of shem and ham and japheth he is the knower of the flood of udan adam hutton is the father of the seven from enoch to adam schofield is adam who was new created in edom i saw it indignant and thou art not moved this has divided thee in sunder and wilt thou still forgive oh thou seest not what i see what is doing in the furnaces listen i will tell thee what is done in moments to thee unknown Luva was cast into the furnaces of affliction and sealed and vala fed in cruel delight the furnaces with fire stern urizen beheld urged by necessity to keep the evil day afar and if perchance with iron power he might avert his own despair in woe and fear he saw vala encircle round the furnaces where luva was closed with joy she heard his howlings and forgot he was her luva with whom she lived in bliss in times of innocence and youth vala comes from the furnace in a cloud but wretched luva is howling in the furnaces in flames among albion spectres to prepare the spectre of albion to reign over thee o loss forming the spectres of albion according to his rage to prepare the spectre sons of adam who is schofield the ninth of albion's sons and the father of all his brethren in the shadowy generation campbell and gwendolen were webs of war and of religion to involve all albion's sons and when they had involved eight their webs rolled outwards into darkness and schofield the ninth remained on the outside of the eight and cox cotop and bowen won in him a fourfold wonder involved the eight such are the generations of the giant albion to separate a law of sin to punish thee in thy members lost answered although i know not this i know far worse than this i know that albion hath divided me and that thou o my spectre hast just cause to be irritated but look steadfastly upon me comfort thyself in my strength the time will arrive when all albion's injuries shall cease and when we shall embrace him tenfold bright rising from his tomb in immortality they have divided themselves by wrath they must be united by pity let us therefore take example and warning o oh, my spectre oh that i could abstain from wrath oh that the lamb of god would look upon me and pity me in my fury in anguish of regeneration 
in terrors of self-annihilation pity must join together those whom wrath has torn in sunder and the religion of generation which was meant for the destruction of jerusalem become her covering till the end of time o oh, holy generation image of regeneration o oh, point of mutual forgiveness between enemies birthplace of the lamb of god incomprehensible the dead despise and scorn thee and cast thee out as a curse seeing the lamb of god in thy gardens and thy palaces where they desire to place the abomination of desolation and sits before his furnace scorn of others and furious pride freeze round him to bars of steel and to iron rocks beneath his feet indignant self-righteousness like whirlwinds of the north rose up against me thundering from the brook of albion's river from ranelagh and strombolo from cromwell's gardens and chelsea the place of wounded soldiers but when he saw my mace whirled round from heaven to earth trembling he said his cold poisons rose up and his sweet deceits covered them all over with a tender cloud as thou art now such was he o spectre i know thy deceit and thy revenges and unless thou desist i will certainly create an eternal hell for thee listen be attentive be obedient lo the furnaces are ready to receive thee i will break thee into shivers and melt thee in the furnaces of death i will cast thee into forms of abhorrence and torment if thou desist not from thine own will and obey not my stern command i am closed up from my children my emanation is dividing and thou my spectre art divided against me but mark i will compel thee to assist me in my terrible labours to beat these hypocritic selfhoods on the anvils of bitter death i am inspired i act not for myself for albion's sake i now am what i am a horror and an astonishment shuddering the heavens to look upon me behold what cruelties are practised in babel and shinar and have approached to zion's hill while loss spoke the terrible spectre fell shuddering before him watching his time with glowing eyes to leap upon his prey loss opened the furnaces in fear the spectre saw to babel and shinar across all europe and asia he saw the tortures of the victims he saw now from the outside what he before saw and felt from within he saw that loss was the sole uncontrolled lord of the furnaces groaning he kneeled before loss's iron-shod feet on london stone hungering and thirsting for loss's life yet pretending obedience while loss pursued his speech in threatenings loud and fierce thou art my pride and self-righteousness i have found thee out thou art revealed before me in all thy magnitude and power thy uncircumcised pretences to chastity must be cut in sunder thy holy wrath and deep deceit cannot avail against me nor shalt thou ever assume the triple form of albion spectre for i am one of the living dare not to mock my inspired fury if thou wast cast forth from my life if i was dead upon the mountains thou mightest be pitied and loved but now i am living unless thou abstain or evening i will create an eternal hell for thee take thou this hammer and in patience heave the thundering bellows take thou these tongues strike thou alternate with me labour obedient 
Hand and Hyle and Coban, Scofeld Cox and Cotope, labor mightily in the wars of Babel and Shinar. All their emanations were condensed. Hand has absorbed all his brethren in his might. All the infant loves and graces were lost, for the mighty hand condensed his emanations into hard, opaque substances, and his infant thoughts and desires into cold, dark cliffs of death. His hammer of gold he seized, and his anvil of adamant he seized the bars of condensed thoughts to forge them into the sword of war, into the bow and arrow, into the thundering cannon, and into the murdering gun. I saw the limbs formed for exercise condemned, and the beauty of eternity looked upon as deformity and loveliness as a dry tree. I saw disease forming a body of death around the Lamb of God, to destroy Jerusalem, and to devour the body of Albion by war and stratagem, to win the labor of the husbandman. Awkwardness, armed in steel, folly in a helmet of gold, weakness with horns and talons, ignorance with a ravening beak, every emanative joy forbidden as a crime, and the emanations buried alive in the earth with pomp of religion, inspiration denied, genius forbidden by laws of punishment. I saw terrified. I took the sighs and tears and bitter groans. I lifted them into my furnaces to form the spiritual sword that lays open the hidden heart. I drew forth the pang of sorrow red-hot. I worked it on my resolute anvil. I heated it in the flames of hand and hyle and coban nine times. Gwendolen and Campbell and Guinevere are melted into the gold, the silver, the liquid ruby, the chrysolith, the topaz, the jacinth, and every precious stone. Loud roar my furnaces, and loud my hammer is heard. I labor day and night. I behold the soft affections condensed beneath my hammer into forms of cruelty, but still I labor in hope, though still my tears flow down, that he who will not defend truth may be compelled to defend a lie, that he may be snared and caught and snared and taken that enthusiasm and life may not cease. Arise, spectre, arise! Thus they contended among the furnaces with groans and tears. Groaning, the spectre heaved the bellows, obeying losses' frowns, till the spaces of Erin were perfected in the furnaces of affliction, and loss drew them forth compelling the harsh spectre into the furnaces and into the valleys of the anvils of death and into the mountains of the anvils and of the heavy hammers till he should bring the sons and daughters of jerusalem to be the sons and daughters of loss that he might protect them from albion's dread spectres storming loud thunderous and mighty the bellows and the hammers moved Compelled by losses hand. End of chapter one. Chapter two of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Jerusalem, Part Two. And this is the manner of the sons of Albion in their strength. They take the two contraries, which are called qualities, with which every substance is clothed. 
they name them good and evil from them they make an abstract which is a negation not only of the substance from which it is derived a murderer of its own body but also a murderer of every divine member it is the reasoning power an abstract objecting power that negatives everything this is the spectre of man the holy reasoning power and in its holiness is closed the abomination of desolation therefore last stands in london building golgonooza compelling his spectre to labours mighty trembling in fear the spectre weeps but loss unmoved by tears or threats remains i must create a system or be enslaved by another man's i will not reason and compare my business is to create so loss in fury and strength in indignation and burning wrath shuddering the spectre howls his howlings terrify the night he stamps around the anvil beating blows of stern despair he curses heaven and earth day and night and sun and moon he curses forest spring and river desert and sandy waste cities and nations families and peoples tongues and laws driven to desperation by losses terrors and threatening fears loss cries obey my voice and never deviate from my will and i will be merciful to thee be thou invisible to all to whom i make thee invisible but chief to my own children o spectre of athona reason not against their dear approach nor them obstruct with thy temptations of doubt and despair o shame o strong and mighty shame i break thy brazen fetters if thou refuse thy present torments will seem southern breezes to what thou shalt endure if thou obey not my great will the spectre answered art thou not ashamed of those thy sins that thou callest thy children lo the law of god commands that they be offered upon his altar o oh, cruelty and torment for thine are also mine i have kept silent hitherto concerning my chief delight but thou hast broken silence now i will speak my mind where is my lovely anithamon o oh, thou my enemy where is my great sin she is also thine i said now is my grief of worth incapable of being surpassed but every moment it accumulates more and more it continues accumulating to eternity the joys of god advance for he is righteous he is not a being of pity and compassion he cannot feel distress he feeds on sacrifice and offering 
delighting in cries and tears and clothed in holiness and solitude but my griefs advance also for ever and ever without end oh that i could cease to be despair i am despair created to be the great example of horror and agony also my prayer is vain i called for compassion compassion mocked mercy and pity threw the gravestone over me and with lead and iron bound it over me for ever life lives on my consuming and the almighty hath made me his contrary to be all evil all reversed and for ever dead knowing and seeing life yet living not how can i then behold and not tremble how can i be beheld and not abhorred so spoke the spectre shuddering and dark tears ran down his shadowy face which loss wiped off but comfort none could give or beam of hope yet ceased he not from labouring at the roarings of his forge with iron and brass building golganusa in great contendings till his sons and daughters came forth from the furnaces at the sublime labours for loss compelled the invisible spectre to labours mighty with vast strength with his mighty chains in pulsations of time and extensions of space like urns of beulah with great labour upon his anvils and in his ladles the ore he lifted pouring it into the clay ground prepared with art striving with systems to deliver individuals from those systems that whenever any spectre began to devour the dead he might feel the pain as if a man gnawed his own tender nerve then erin came forth from the furnaces and all the daughters of beulah came from the furnaces by losses mighty power for jerusalem's sake walking up and down among the spaces of erin and the sons and daughters of Lust came forth in perfection lovely, and the spaces of Erin reached from the starry heights to the starry depth. Loss wept with exceeding joy, and all wept with joy together. They feared they never more should see their father, who was built in from eternity in the cliffs of albion but when the joy of meeting was exhausted in loving embrace again they lament oh what shall we do for lovely jerusalem to protect the emanations of albion's mighty ones from cruelty sabrina and ignosia begin to sharpen their beamy spears of light and love their little children stand with arrows of gold Regan is wholly cruel schofield is bound in iron armour he is like a mandrake in the earth before reuben's gate he shoots beneath jerusalem's walls to undermine her foundations Vala is but thy shadow o oh, thou loveliest among women a shadow animated by thy tears 
o mournful jerusalem why wilt thou give to her a body whose life is but a shade her joy and love a shade a shade of sweet repose but animated and vegetated she is a devouring worm what shall we do for thee o lovely mild jerusalem and loss said i behold the finger of god in terrors albion is dead his emanation is divided from him but i am living yet i feel my emanation also dividing such thing was never known o oh, pity me thou all piteous one what shall i do or how exist divided from any thamum yet why despair i saw the finger of god go forth upon my furnaces from within the wheels of albion's sons fixing their systems permanent by mathematic power giving a body to falsehood that it may be cast off for ever with demonstrative science piercing apollyon with his own bow god is within and without he is even in the depths of hell such were the lamentations of the labourers in the furnaces and they appeared within and without encircling on both sides the starry wheels of albion's sons with spaces for jerusalem and for vala the shadow of jerusalem the ever morning shade on both sides within and without beaming gloriously terrified at the sublime wonder loss stood before his furnaces and they stood around terrified with admiration at erin's spaces for the spaces reached from the starry height to the starry depth and they builded golganooza terrible eternal labour what are those golden builders doing where was the burying place of soft ethinthus near tyburn's fatal tree is that mild zion's hills most ancient promontory near mournful ever weeping paddington is that calvary and golgotha becoming a building of pity and compassion lo the stones are pity and the bricks well-wrought affections enamelled with love and kindness and the tiles engraven gold labour of merciful hands the beams and rafters of forgiveness the mortar and cement of the work tears of honesty the nails and the screws and iron braces are well wrought blandishments and well contrived words firm fixing never forgotten always comforting the remembrance the floors humility the ceilings devotion the hearts thanksgiving prepare the furniture o lambeth in thy pitying looms the curtains woven tears and sighs wrought into lovely forms for comfort there the secret furniture of jerusalem's chamber is wrought lambeth the bride the lamb's wife loveth thee thou art one with her 
and knowest not of self in thy supreme joy go on builders in hope though jerusalem wanders far away without the gate of loss among the dark satanic wheels fourfold the sons of loss in their divisions and fourfold the great city of golgonooza fourfold toward the north and toward the south fourfold and fourfold toward the east and west each within other toward the four points that toward eden and that toward the world of generation and that toward beulah and that toward ulro ulro is the space of the terrible starry wheels of albion suns but that toward eden is walled up till time of renovation yet it is perfect in its building ornaments and perfection and the four points are thus beheld in great eternity west the circumference south the zenith north the nadir east the centre unapproachable for ever these are the four faces towards the four worlds of humanity in every man ezekiel saw them by sheba's blood and the eyes of the south and the nostrils of the east and the tongue is the west and the ear is the north and the north gate of golgonooza toward generation has four sculptured bulls terrible before the gate of iron and iron the bulls and that which looks toward oro clay baked and enamelled eternal glowing as four furnaces turning upon the wheels of albion's sons with enormous power and that toward beulah four gold silver brass and iron and that toward eden four formed of gold silver brass and iron the south a golden gate has four lions terrible living that toward generation four of iron carved wondrous that toward ulro four clay baked laborious workmanship that toward eden four immortal gold silver brass and iron the western gate fourfold is closed having four cherubim its guards living the work of elemental hands laborious task like men hermaphroditic each winged with eight wings that toward generation i am that toward beulah stone that toward ulro clay that toward eden metals but all closed up till the last day when the grave shall yield their dead the eastern gate fourfold terrible and deadly its ornaments taking their form from the wheels of albion's sons as cogs are formed in a wheel 
to fit the cogs of the adverse wheel that toward eden eternal ice frozen in seven folds of forms of death and that toward beulah stone the seven diseases of the earth are carved terrible and that toward Oro forms of war seven enormities and that toward generation seven generative forms and every part of the city is fourfold and every inhabitant fourfold and every pot and vessel and garment and utensil of the houses and every house fourfold but the third gate in every one is closed as with a threefold curtain of ivory and fine linen and ermine and luban stands in middle of the city a moat of fire surrounds luban losses palace and the golden looms of cathedron and sixty-four thousand genii guard the eastern gate and sixty-four thousand gnomes guard the northern gate and sixty-four thousand nymphs guard the western gate and sixty-four thousand fairies guard the southern gate. Around Golganusa lies the land of death eternal, a land of pain and misery and despair and ever-brooding melancholy. In all the twenty-seven heavens, numbered from Adam to Luther, from the blue mundane shell, reaching to the vegetative earth, the vegetative universe opens like a flower from the earth's centre in which is eternity it expands in stars to the mundane shell and there it meets eternity again both within and without and the abstract voids between the stars are the satanic wheels there is the cave the rock the tree the lake of Udan Adam, the forest and the marsh and the pits of bitumen deadly, the rocks of solid fire, the ice valleys, the plains of burning sand, the rivers, cataract and lakes of fire, the islands of the fiery lakes, the trees of malice, revenge and black anxiety and the cities of the salamandrine men but whatever is visible to the generated man is a creation of mercy and love from the satanic void the land of darkness flamed but no light and no repose the land of snows of trembling and of iron hail incessant the land of earthquake and the land of woven labyrinths the land of snares and traps and wheels and pitfalls and dire mills the voids the solids and the land of clouds and regions of waters with their inhabitants in the twenty-seven heavens beneath beulah self-righteousnesses conglomerating against the divine vision a concave earth wondrous chasmal abyssal incoherent forming the mundane shell above beneath on all sides surrounding golgonusa loss walks round the walls night and day he views the city of golgonusa and its smaller cities the looms and mills and prisons and workhouses of og and anak the amalekite the canaanite the moabite the egyptian 
and all that has existed in the space of six thousand years permanent and not lost not lost nor vanished and every little act word work and wish that has existed all remaining still in those churches ever consuming and ever building by the spectres of all the inhabitants of earth wailing to be created shadowy to those who dwell not in them mere possibilities but to those who enter into them they seem the only substances for everything exists and not one sigh nor smile nor tear one hair nor particle of dust not one can pass away he views the cherub at the tree of life also the serpent or the first-born coiled in the south the dragon urizen tharmas the vegetated tongue even the devouring tongue a threefold region a false brain a false heart and false bowels all together composing the false tongue beneath beulah as a watery flame revolving every way and as dark roots and stems a forest of affliction growing in seas of sorrow loss also views the four females ahania and enion and vala and any Thamon lovely, and from them all the lovely beaming daughters of Albion, Ahania, and Enion, and Vala, are three evanescent shades. Any Thamon is a vegetated mortal wife of loss, his emanation, yet his wife till the sleep of death is past. Such are the buildings of loss, and such are the whoops of any thamam and loss beheld his sons and he beheld his daughters every one a translucent wonder a universe within increasing inwards into length and breadth and height starry and glorious and they every one in their bright loins have a beautiful golden gate which opens into the vegetative world and every one a gate of rubies and all sorts of precious stones in their translucent hearts which opens into the vegetative world and every one a gate of iron dreadful and wonderful in their translucent heads which opens into the vegetative world and every one has the three regions childhood manhood and age but the gate of the tongue the western gate in them is closed having a wall builded against it and thereby the gates eastward and southward and northward are encircled with flaming fires and the north is breadth the south is height and depth the east is inwards and the west is outwards every way and loss beheld the mild emanation jerusalem eastward bending her revolutions toward the starry wheels in maternal anguish like a pale cloud arising from the arms of beulah's daughters in entuthan benithan's deep veils beneath golganuza and hand and hyle rooted into jerusalem by a fibre of strong revenge and schofield vegetated by reuben's gate in every nation of the earth till the twelve sons of albion and rooted into every nation a mighty polypus growing from albion over the whole earth such is my awful vision End of chapter 2 
Chapter Three of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Jerusalem Part Three. I see the fourfold man, the humanity in deadly sleep, and its fallen emanation, the spectre and its cruel shadow. I see the past, present, and future existing all at once before me. O oh, divine spirit, sustain me on thy wings, that I may awake Albion from his long and cold repose. For Bacon and Newton, sheathed in dismal steel, their terrors hang like iron scourges over Albion. Reasonings like vast serpents enfold around my limbs, bruising my minute articulation. I turn my eyes to the schools and universities of Europe, and there behold the loom of Locke, whose woof rages dire, washed by the water-wheels of Newton. Black the cloth in heavy wreaths folds over every nation. Cruel works of many wheels I view, wheel without wheel, with cogs tyrannic, moving by compulsion each other, not as those in Eden, which wheel within wheel in freedom revolve in harmony and peace. I see in deadly fear in London, lost raging round his anvil of death forming an axe of gold the four sons of loss stand around him cutting the fibres from albion's hills that albion's sons may roll apart over the nations while reuben enroots his brethren in the narrow canaanite from the limit Noah to the limit Abram, in whose loins Reuben, in his twelvefold majesty and beauty, shall take refuge. As Abraham flees from Chaldea, shaking his gory locks. But first Albion must sleep, divided from the nations. I see Albion sitting upon his rock in the first winter, and thence I see the chaos of Satan and the world of Adam when the divine hand went forth on Albion in the midwinter and at the place of death when Albion sat in eternal death among the furnaces of loss in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Hampstead, Highgate, Finchley, Hendon, Muswell Hill, rage loud before Bromion's iron tongues and glowing poker reddening fierce. Hertfordshire glows with fierce vegetation. In the forests, the oak frowns terrible the beech and ash and elm enroot among the spiritual fires loud the cornfields thunder along the soldiers fife the harlot shriek the virgin's dismal groan the parents feared the brother's jealousy the sister's curse 
beneath the storms of Theotomon, and the thundering bellows heaves in the hand of Palamabron, who, in London's darkness, before the anvil, watches the bellowing flames. Thundering, the hammer loud rages in rentrous strong grasp, swinging loud round from heaven to earth, down falling with heavy blow, dead on the anvil, where the red-hot wedge groans in pain. He quenches it in the black trough of his forge, london's river feeds the dread forge trembling and shuddering along the valleys humber and trent roll dreadful before the seventh furnace and tweed and tyne anxious give up their souls for albion's sake lincolnshire derbyshire nottinghamshire leicestershire from oxfordshire to norfolk on the lake of udan adam labour within the furnaces walking among the fires with ladles huge and iron pokers over the island white scotland pours out his sons to labour at the furnaces wales gives his daughters to the looms england nursing mothers gives to the children of albion and to the children of jerusalem from the blue mundane shell even to the earth of vegetation throughout the whole creation which groans to be delivered albion groans in the deep slumbers of death upon his rock here loss fixed down the fifty-two counties of england and wales the thirty-six of scotland and the thirty-four of ireland with mighty power when they fled out at jerusalem's gates away from the conflict of luva and urizen fixing the gate in the twelve counties of wales and thence gates looking every way to the four points conduct to england and scotland and ireland and thence to all the kingdoms and nations and families of the earth the gate of reuben in carmarthenshire the gate of Simeon in Cardiganshire, and the gate of Levi in Montgomeryshire, the gate of Judah, Marionethshire, the gate of Dan, Flintshire, the gate of Naphtali, Radnorshire, the gate of Gad, Pembrokeshire, the gate of Asher, Carnarvonshire, the gate of Issachar, Bereknockshire, the gate of Zebulun in Anglesey and Sodor, so is Wales divided, the gate of Joseph, Denbyshire, the gate of Benjamin, Glamorganshire, for the protection of the twelve emanations of Albion's sons. And the forty counties of England are thus divided in the gates. Of Reuben, Norfolk, Suffolk, Essex, Simeon, Lincoln, York, Lancashire, Levi, Middlesex, Kent, Surrey, Judah, Somerset, Gloucester, Wiltshire, Dan, Cornwall, Devon, 
Dorset, Naphtali, Warwick, Leicester, Worcester, Gad, Oxford, Bucks, Hartford, Asher, Sussex, Hampshire, Berkshire, Issachar, Northampton, Rutland, Nottingham, Zebulon, Bedford, Huntington, Cambridgeshire, Joseph, Staffordshire, Shropshire, Herefordshire, Benjamin, Derbyshire, Cheshire, Monmouth, and Cumberland, Northumberland, Westmoreland, and Durham are divided in the gates of Reuben, Judah, Dan, and Joseph and the thirty-six counties of scotland divided in the gates of reuben kincard haddington forfire simeon ayrshire argyle bant levi edinburgh roxburgh ross judah aberdeen berwick Dumfries, Dam, Butte, Ketness, Clackmanan, Naphtali, Nam, Inverness, Linlithgow, Gad, Peebles, Perth, Renfrew, Asher, Sutherland, Stirling, Wigtown, Issachar, Selkirk, Dumbarton, Glasgow, Zebulon, Orkney, Shetland, Skye, Joseph, Elgin, Lanark, Kinross, Benjamin, Cromarty, Mora, Kirkbright. Governing all by the sweet delights of secret amorous glances, in any Tharman's halls builded by Loss and his mighty children. All things acted on earth are seen in the bright sculptures of Loss's halls, and every age renews its powers from these works, with every pathetic story possible to happen from hate or wayward love and every sorrow and distress is carved here. Every affinity of parents, marriages, and friendships are here, in all their various combinations, wrought with wondrous art. All that can happen to man in his pilgrimage of seventy years, such is the divine written law of Horeb and Sinai, and such the holy gospel of Mount Olivet and Calvary. His spectre divides, and loss in fury compels it to divide, to labour in the fire, in the water, in the earth, in the air, to follow the daughters of Albion, as the hound follows the scent of the wild inhabitant of the forest, to drive them from his own, to make a way for the children of loss to come from the furnaces. But Loss himself, against Albion's sons, his fury bends, for he dare not approach the daughters openly, lest he be consumed in the fires of their beauty and perfection, and be vegetated beneath their looms in a generation of death and resurrection to forgetfulness. They woo Loss continually to subdue his strength he continually shows them his spectre sending him abroad over the four points of heaven in the fierce desires of beauty and in the tortures of repulse he is the spectre of the living pursuing the emanations of the dead shuddering they flee they hide in the druid temples in cold chastity subdued by the spectre of the living 
and terrified by undisguised desire. For loss said, Though my spectre is divided, as I am a living man, I must compel him to obey me wholly, that any Thaman may not be lost, and lest he should devour any Thaman arm me, piteous image of my soft desires and loves, O oh, any Thaman, I will compel my spectre to obey, I will restore to thee thy children, no one bruises or starves himself to make himself fit for labour. Tormented with sweet desire for these beauties of Albion, they would never love my power if they did not seek to destroy any Thaman. Vala would never have sought and loved Albion if she had not sought to destroy Jerusalem. Such is that false and generating love, a pretense of love to destroy love, cruel hypocrisy, unlike the lovely delusions of Beulah, and cruel forms, unlike the merciful forms of Beulah's night. They know not why they love, nor wherefore they sicken and die, calling that holy love, which is envy, revenge, and cruelty, which separated the stars from the mountains, the mountains from man, and left man a little grovelling root outside of himself. Negations are not contraries. Contraries mutually exist, but negations exist not. Exceptions and objections and unbeliefs exist not nor shall they ever be organized for ever and ever. If thou separate from me, thou art a negation, a mere reasoning and derogation from me, an objecting and cruel spite and malice and envy. But my emanation, alas, will become my contrary. O oh, thou negation, I will continually compel thee to be invisible to any but whom I please, and when, and where, and how I please, and never, never shalt thou be organized, but as a distorted and reversed reflection in the darkness and in the non-entity, nor shall that which is above ever descend into thee, but thou shalt be a non-entity for ever, and if any enter into thee, thou shalt be an unquenchable fire, and he shall be a never-dying worm, mutually tormented by those that thou tormentest, a hell and despair for ever and ever. So loss, in secret with himself communed, and any thumb unheard in her darkness, and was comforted, yet still she divided away in gnawing pain from Loss's bosom in the deadly night, first as a red globe of blood trembling beneath his bosom, suspended over her he hung, he enfolded her in his garments of wool, he hid her from the spectre, in shame and confusion of face, in terrors and pains of hell and eternal death, the trembling globe shot forth self-living, and loss howled over it, feeding it with his groans and tears day and night without ceasing, and the spectrous darkness from his back divided in temptations, and in grinding agonies, in threats, stiflings, and direful strugglings. Go thou to Schofield, ask him if he is Bath, or if he is Canterbury, tell him to be no more dubious, demand explicit words, tell him I will dash him into shivers, 
where and at what time I please. Tell Hand and Schofield they are my ministers of evil to those I hate, for I can hate also as well as they. From every one of the four regions of human majesty there is an outside spread without and an outside spread within beyond the outline of identity both ways which meet in one an orbed void of doubt despair hunger and thirst and sorrow here the twelve sons of albion joined in dark assembly jealous of jerusalem's children ashamed of her little ones for vala produced the bodies jerusalem gave the souls became as three immense wheels turning upon one another into nonentity and their thunders hoarse appall the dead to murder their own souls to build a kingdom among the dead cast cast ye jerusalem forth the shadow of delusions the harlot daughter mother of pity and dishonourable forgiveness our father albion sin and shame but father now no more nor sons nor hateful peace and love nor soft complacences with transgressors meeting in brotherhood around the table or in the porch or garden no more the sinful delights of age and youth and boy and girl and animal and herb and river and mountain and city and village and house and family beneath the oak and palm beneath the vine and fig tree in self-denial but war and deadly contention between father and son and light and love o oh, bold asperities of haters met in deadly strife rending the house and garden the unforgiving porches the tables of enmity and beds and chambers of trembling and suspicion hatreds of age and youth and boy and girl and animal and herb and river and mountain and city and village and house and family that the perfect may live in glory redeemed by sacrifice of the lamb and of his children before sinful jerusalem to build babylon the city of vala the goddess virgin mother she is our mother nature jerusalem is our harlot sister returned with children of pollution to defile our house with sin and shame cast cast her into the potter's field her little ones she must slay upon our altars and her aged parents must be carried into captivity to redeem her soul to be for a shame and a curse and to be our slaves for ever so cry hand and hyle the eldest of the fathers of albion's little ones to destroy the divine saviour the friend of sinners building castles in desolated places and strong fortifications soon hand mightily devoured and absorbed albion's twelve sons out from his bosom a mighty polypus vegetating in darkness and hyle and coban were his two chosen ones for emissaries in war forth from his bosom they went and returned like wheels from a great wheel reflected in the deep horse turned the starry wheels 
rending away in Albion's loins beyond the night of Beulah. In a dark and unknown night outstretched his giant beauty on the ground in pain and tears, his children exiled from his breast passed to and fro before him his birds are silent on his hills flocks die beneath his branches his tents are fallen his trumpets and the sweet sound of his harp are silent on his clouded hills that belch forth storms and fire his milk of cows and honey of bees and fruit of golden harvest is gathered in the scorching heat and in the driving rain where once he sat he weary walks in misery and pain his giant beauty and perfection fallen into dust till from within his withered breast grown narrow with his woes the corn is turned to thistles and the apples into poison the birds of song to murderous crows his joys to bitter groans the voices of children in his tents to cries of helpless infants and self-exiled from the face of light and shine of morning in the dark world a narrow house he wanders up and down seeking for rest and finding none and hidden far within his aeon weeping in the cold and desolated earth all his affections now appear withoutside all his sons hand hyle and coban guantock peachy Brereton, Slade, and Hutton, Schofeld, Cox, Cotop, and Bowen, his twelve sons, satanic mills. Who are the spectres of the twenty-four? Each double-formed revolve upon his mountains, groaning in pain. Beneath the dark, incessant sky, seeking for rest and finding none, raging against the human natures ravening to gormandize the human majesty and beauty of the twenty-four condensing them into solid rocks with cruelty and abhorrence suspicion and revenge and the seven diseases of the soul settled around albion and around louvre in his secret cloud willing the friends endured for albion's sake and for jerusalem his emanation shut within his bosom which hardened against them more and more as he builded onwards on the gulf of death in self-righteousness that rolled before his awful feet in pride of virtue for victory and loss was roofed in from eternity in albion's cliffs which stand upon the ends of beulah and with outside all appeared a rocky form against the divine humanity end of chapter three chapter four of Jerusalem to Revelations, a quartet of spiritual experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Jerusalem, Part Four. Albion's circumference was closed. His centre began darkening into the night of Beulah, and the moon of Beulah rose, clouded with storms. Lost, 
his strong guard walked round beneath the moon and albion fled inward among the currents of his rivers he found jerusalem upon the river of his city soft reposed in the arms of vala assimilating in want with vala the lily of havila and they sang soft through lambeth's vales in a sweet moony night and silence that they had created with a blue sky spread over with wings and a mild moon dividing and uniting into many female forms jerusalem trembling then in one commingling in eternal tears sighing to melt his giant beauty on the moony river but when they saw albion fallen upon mild lambeth's vale astonished terrified they hovered over his giant limb then thus jerusalem spoke while vala wove the veil of tears weeping in pleadings of love in the web of despair wherefore hast thou shut me into the winter of human life and closed up the sweet regions of youth and virgin innocence where we live forgetting error not pondering on evil among my lambs and brooks of water among my warbling birds where we delight in innocence before the face of the lamb going in and out before him in his love and sweet affection vala replied weeping and trembling hiding in her veil when winter rends the hungry family and the snow falls upon the ways of men hiding the paths of man and beast then mourns the wanderer then he repents his wanderings and eyes the distant forest then the slave groans in the dungeon of stone the captive in the mill of the stranger sold for scanty hire they view their former life they number moments over and over stringing them on their remembrance as on a thread of sorrow thou art my sister and my daughter thy shame is mine also ask me not of my griefs thou knowest all my griefs jerusalem answered with soft tears over the valleys o oh, vala what is sin that thou shudderest and weepest at sight of thy once loved jerusalem what is sin but a little error and fault that is soon forgiven but mercy is not a sin nor pity nor love nor kind forgiveness oh if i have sinned forgive and pity me oh unfold thy veil in mercy and love slay not my little ones beloved virgin daughter of babylon slay not my infant loves and graces beautiful daughter of moab i cannot put off the human form i strive but strive in vain when albion rent thy beautiful net of gold and silver twine thou hadst woven it with art thou hadst caught me in the bands of love thou refusest to let me go albion beheld thy beauty beautiful through our love's comeliness beautiful through pity the veil shone with thy brightness in the eyes of Albion.
because it enclosed pity and love, because we loved one another. Albion loved thee. He rent thy veil. He embraced thee. He loved thee. Astonished at his beauty and perfection, thou forgavest his furious love. I redounded from Albion's bosom in my virgin loveliness. The Lamb of God received me in his arms. He smiled upon us. He made me his bride and wife. He gave thee to Albion. Then was a time of love. Oh, why is it passed away? Then Albion broke silence, and with groans replied, O oh, Vala, O oh, Jerusalem, do you delight in my groans? You, O oh, lovely forms, you have prepared my death cup. The disease of shame covers me from head to feet. I have no hope. Every boil upon my body is a separate and deadly sin. Doubt first assailed me, then shame took possession of me. Shame divides families. Shame hath divided Albion in sunder. First fled my sons, and then my daughters, then my wild animations, my cattle next, last even the dog of my gate. The forests fled, the cornfields, and the breathing gardens outside separated. The sea, the stars, the sun, the moon, driven forth by my disease. All is eternal death, unless you can weave a chaste body over an unchaste mind. Vala, oh, that thou wert pure, that the deep wound of sin might be closed up with the needle and with the loom, to cover Gwendolen and Ragan with costly robes of natural virtue, for their spiritual forms without avail wither in Luva's sepulchre. I thrust him from my presence, and all my children followed his loud howlings into the deep. Jerusalem, dissembler Jerusalem, I look into thy bosom, I discover thy secret places. Cordelia, I behold thee whom I thought pure as the heavens in innocence and fear, thy tabernacle taken down, thy secret cherubim disclosed. Art thou broken? Ah, me, Sabrina, running by my side. In childhood, what wert thou? Unutterable anguish, Conwenna, thy cradled infancy is most piteous. Oh, hide, oh, hide. Their secret gardens were made paths to the traveller. I knew not of their secret loves with those I hated most nor that their every thought was sin and secret appetite. Hyl sees in fear, he howls in fury over them. Hand sees in jealous fear, in stern accusation with cruel stripes. He drives them through the streets of Babylon before my face, because they taught Luva to rise into my clouded heaven. Battersea and Chelsea mourn for Campbell and Gwendolen. Hackney and Holloway sicken for Estrild and Ignoje. Because the peak, Malvern and Cheviot, reason in cruelty, Penman Mar and Dinis Bram demonstrate in unbelief. Manchester and Liverpool or in tortures of doubt and despair, Malden and Colchester demonstrate. I hear my children's voices, I see their piteous faces gleam out upon the cruel winds from Lincoln and Norwich, 
from Edinburgh and Monmouth. I see them distant from my bosom, scourged along the roads, then lost in clouds. I hear their tender voices. Clouds divide. I see them die beneath the whips of the captains. They are taken in solemn pomp into Chaldea, across the breadths of Europe, six months they lie embalmed in silent death worshipped carried in arcs of oak before the armies in the spring bursting their arcs they rise again to life they play before the armies i hear their loud cymbals and their deadly cries are the dead cruel are those who are enfolded in moral law revengeful oh that death and annihilation were the same then vala answered spreading her scarlet veil over albion albion thy fear has made me tremble thy terrors have surrounded me thy sons have nailed me on the gate piercing my hands and feet till schofield's nimrod the mighty huntsman before jehovah came with cush his son and took me down he in a golden ark bears me before his armies though my shadow hovers here the flesh of multitudes fed and nourished me in my childhood my morn and evening food were prepared in battles of men great is the cry of the hounds of nimrod along the valley of vision they scent the odour of war in the valley of vision all love is lost terror succeeds and hatred instead of love, and stern demands of right and duty instead of liberty. Once thou wast to me the loveliest son of heaven, but now where shall I hide from thy dread countenance and searching eyes? I have looked into the secret soul of him I loved, and in the dark recesses found sin and can never return albion again uttered his voice beneath the silent moon i brought love into light of day to pride in chaste beauty i brought love into light and fancied innocence is no more then spake jerusalem o albion my father albion why wilt thou number every little fibre of my soul spreading them out before the sun like stalks of flax to dry the infant joy is beautiful but its anatomy horrible ghast and deadly naught shalt thou find in it but dark despair and everlasting brooding melancholy then albion turned his face toward jerusalem and spake hide thou jerusalem in impalpable voidness not to be touched by the hand nor seen with the eye o jerusalem would thou wert not and that thy place might never be found but come o vala with knife and cup drain my blood to the last drop then hide me in thy scarlet tabernacle for i see luva whom i slew i behold him in my spectre as i behold jerusalem in thee o vala dark and cold jerusalem then stretched her hand toward the moon and spoke 
why should punishment weave the veil with iron wheels of war when forgiveness might it weave with wings of cherubim loud groaned albion from mountain to mountain and replied jerusalem jerusalem deluding shadow of albion daughter of my fantasy unlawful pleasure albion's curse i came here with intention to annihilate thee but my soul is melted away inwoven within the veil hast thou again knitted the veil of bala which i for thee pitying rent in ancient times i see it whole and more perfect and shining with beauty but thou o oh, wretched father jerusalem replied like a voice heard from a sepulchre father once piteous is piteous sin embalmed in father's bosom in an eternal death for albion's sake our best beloved thou art my father and my brother why hast thou hidden me remote from the divine vision my lord and saviour trembling stood albion at her words in jealous dark despair he felt that love and pity are the same a soft repose inward complacency of soul a self-annihilation i have erred i am ashamed and will never return more i have taught my children sacrifices of cruelty what shall i answer i will hide it from eternals i will give myself for my children which way soever i turn i behold humanity and pity he recoiled he rushed outwards he bore the veil whole away his fires redound from his dragon altars in errors returning he drew the veil of moral virtue woven for cruel laws and cast it into the atlantic deep to catch the souls of the dead he stood between the palm tree and the oak of weeping which stand upon the edge of beulah and there albion sunk down in sick pallid languor these were his last words relapsing hoarse from his rocks from caverns of derbyshire and wales and scotland uttered from the circumference into eternity blasphemous sons of feminine delusion god in the dreary void dwells from eternity wide separated from the human soul but thou deluding image by whom imbued the veil i rent lo here is bala's veil whole for a law a terror and a curse and therefore god takes vengeance on me from my clay-cold bosom my children wander trembling victims of his moral justice his snows fall on me and cover me while in the veil i fold my dying limbs therefore o manhood if thou art aught but a mere fantasy here dying albion's curse may god who dwells in this dark ulro and voidness vengeance take and drop thee down into this abyss of sorrow and torture like me thy victim oh the death and annihilation were the same what have i said what have i done oh all-powerful human words you recall back upon me in the blood of the lamb slain in his children two bleeding contraries equally true are his witnesses against me we reared mighty stones we danced naked around them 
thinking to bring love into light of day to jerusalem's shame displaying our giant limbs to all the winds of heaven sudden shame seized us we could not look on one another for abhorrence the blue of our immortal veins and all their hosts fled from our limbs and wandered distant in the dismal night clouded and dark the sun fled from the britain's forehead the moon from his mighty loins scandinavia fled with all his mountains filled with groans oh what is life and what is man oh what is death wherefore are you my children natives in the grave to where i go or are you born to feed the hungry ravenings of destruction to be the sport of accident to waste in wrath and love a weary life in brooding cares and anxious labours that prove but chaff o oh, jerusalem jerusalem i have forsaken thy courts thy pillars of ivory and gold thy curtains of silk and fine linen thy pavements of precious stones thy walls of pearl and gold thy gates of thanksgiving thy windows of praise thy clouds of blessing thy cherubims of tender mercy stretching their wings sublime over the little ones of albion o oh, human imagination o oh, divine body i have crucified i have turned my back upon thee into the wastes of moral law there babylon is builded in the waste founded in human desolation o oh, babylon thy watchman stands over thee in the night thy severe judge all the day long proves thee o oh, babylon with provings of destruction with giving thee thy heart's desire but albion is cast forth to the potter his children to the builders to build babylon because they have forsaken jerusalem the walls of babylon are souls of men her gates the groans of nations her towers are the miseries of once happy families her streets are paved with destruction her houses built with death her palaces with hell and the grave her synagogues with torments of ever-hardening despair squared and polished with cruel skill yet thou wast lovely as the summer cloud upon my hills when jerusalem was thy heart's desire in times of youth and love thy sons came to jerusalem with gifts she sent them away with blessings on their hands and on their feet blessings of gold and pearl and diamond thy daughters sang in her court they came up to jerusalem they walked before albion in the exchanges of london every nation walked and london walked in every nation mutual in love and harmony albion covered the whole earth england encompassed the nations mutual each within other's bosom in visions of regeneration jerusalem covered the atlantic mountains and the erythraeum from bright japan and china to hesperia france and england mount zion lifted his head in every nation under heaven and the mount of olives was beheld over the whole earth the footsteps of the lamb of god were there but now no more no more shall i behold him he is clothed in luva suffolket yet why these smitings of luva the gentlest mildest zoa if god was merciful this could not be o lamb of god 
thou art a delusion and jerusalem is my sin o oh, my children i have educated you in the crucifying cruelties of demonstration till you have assumed the providence of god and slain your father dost thou appear before me who liest dead in louva's sepulchre dost thou forgive me thou who wast dead and art alive look not so merciful upon me o oh, thou slain lamb of god i die i die in thy arms though hope is banished from me thundering the veil rushes from his hand vegetating knot by knot day by day night by night loud roll the indignant atlantic waves and the ethereum turning up the bottoms of the deeps and there was heard a great lamenting in beulah all the regions of beulah were moved as the tender bowels are moved and they said why did you take vengeance o ye sons of the mighty albion planting these oaken groves erecting these dragon temples injury the lord heals but vengeance cannot be healed as the sons of albion have done to Luva, so they have in him done to the divine lord and saviour who suffers with those that suffer for not one sparrow can suffer and the whole universe not suffer also in all its regions and its father and saviour not pity and weep but vengeance is the destroyer of grace and repentance in the bosom of the injurer in which the divine lamb is cruelly slain descend o lamb of god and take away the imputation of sin by the creation of states and the deliverance of individuals evermore amen thus wept they in beulah over the four regions of albion but many doubted and despaired and imputed sin and righteousness End of chapter 4